I'm not sure what just happened, but I was driving. All of a sudden I go into limp mode and get a error on the screen saying engine overheating. I pulled over immediately. All that, as you can see, I know it's raining, but that's cooling. That one, of course, is dry. Because it's all on the ground. This one is wet. So we got the GT back home. Thanks to my buddy Chris, he helped me diagnose the issue. If you look in here, we are peeing coolant, folks. On top of that, the car is beeping. Very weird. So we are at BMW. I just got here with a gallon of distilled water. Looks like some coolant still leaking out with it. But hopefully they can get this fixed and we can get the GT back on road. And just like that, the GT is back home, not fixed. I declined service at BMW. Let me explain. I made it home with a half gallon of distilled to spare. I figured I wasn't gonna use up my expensive BMW coolant. But basically what they diagnosed was what we knew already. The lower radiator is punctured, it's leaking. We're talking about the one through the lower grills right here. My service advisor at BMW did confirm that it's actually the front radiator that gets the new part number with the rock guard, not the lower one. In my opinion, and I think a lot of you guys might agree, I think it should all be covered. The radiators are exposed and unprotected, and it's honestly a design flaw from the factory. Unfortunately, even after some attempted convincing, the dealership is not going to cover it under any goodwill or anything like that. So I'd have to pay out of pocket, and they were trying to quote me about 875 bucks. Luckily for us, Brian at Keys Motorsports made a video on how to replace it. It's super easy, and once you see it, you won't believe why BMW was trying to charge me almost $900 for it. Now the great part about this install is that all you have to do is take the wheel off and the inner front wheel well, and you can get right to the radiator. So I'm gonna go ahead and jack the car up, put it on some stands, take the wheel off, take this fender liner out. So before we jack it up and take the wheel off, I wanted to show you these wheel locks that came with the car when I bought it. I'm not sure if this came like this from factory, but if you know, drop a comment. But if you look at the lugs, there's one that's different. It has a special key to it right here. These seem to give a lot of guys issues when they lose this. I do plan to do a stud conversion on these at some point, change out the hardware, so I'm not too worried about it. So let's see just how easy it is to get to this old one. I got my ESCO jack stands, my BMW jack pad adapters, and a half drive breaker bar and torque wrench, and the plastic sleeved 17 mil so you won't scratch your wheels. And of course our BMW cooling mix. And the last thing we need is an eight mil for the screws on the inside of the fender. Now that we broke torque on the lock and nut, I'll take the key, put it to the side. I got the wheel lock key again. I'm gonna go ahead and take that one off. And then two more, I'm gonna leave two on. Then we're gonna jack the car up and take the other two off. Now that the car's in the air, we can go ahead and take these last two bolts off. So that lower radiator right through there, leaking out the front. Now take note of these eight mils around the perimeter of the fender liner. We're gonna go ahead and take those out. Four, seven, 10, 11. Here's the sucker right here, our lower auxiliary radiator. Just clipped in by some clips at the top. We have to disconnect these two lines at the top and bottom and we can swap it out. Now, even though all my coolant drained out, I'm gonna go ahead and put this drain pan right here just in case we get any more drippage. So I'm gonna disconnect the bottom one first. Just need this little pick tool. Pull this back, doesn't come all the way off. I thought all my coolant drained out. Let's see what this top one has to offer. That wasn't supposed to come off. And that one didn't have anything in it. Two clips. So here's where those two clips clip in. This is the inside of the radiator. Let me take a look 
at all this rock damage. I mean, honestly, this really should be a recall right along the front mount radiator recall. Let's go ahead and open the new one from FCP Euro. So I got this from FCP Euro for 250 bucks, free shipping. Here's the BMW part number. And it does match the number on the old one. Yes, sir. Look what just fell out of here off camera. Can't even make this up, freaking rock. Let's go ahead and take our protective covers off. I don't think it matters which way this goes. I think it's symmetrical. So you wanna set it in from the bottom and then clip it in up top. Connect your lines. Now I'm gonna do a little 50-50 action here. All right, so in order to bleed the coolant system, we'll take the key in here. Without hitting the brake, we'll hit the start-stop once. And then we'll turn the fan on, speed one, and crank it up as high as you can. Then we're gonna hold the accelerator down for about 10 seconds. Now you can hear some stuff in this area. And while we wait for that to finish, we'll go ahead and throw the fender liner back in. Then we'll take our half drop torque wrench, set it to 103 foot pounds. And in my case, the last one will be the locking nut. So it's a week later and I've had no issues with the new auxiliary radiator, but I noticed something that made me go back to look at the first couple of pictures of my car. So if we take a look in the area with the new auxiliary radiator, I've got it unclipped, so don't mind the crookedness, but obviously this fog light trim piece is open. And if you look on this side, this fog light trim is closed. And it looks like a separate piece. This tripped me out at first. I thought I was missing a piece. I jumped on a Google search to compare the front end of F-Series vehicles. And it looks like I'm not the only one with a partially open grid on the right side and a closed one on the left. Apparently this helps with cooling on some cars. That little auxiliary radiator is right there so I can understand it might need a little bit of airflow. Go to the other side. We do not have that radiator, but you can see that piece right there that is closing that vent up. But oddly enough, even though it came from the factory like this, BMW actually sells the part for the right side. This piece looks super easy to clip in. You just gotta get to the back side of this, which I've already done for the second time. I unclipped the new radiator. And if I can get an angle in here, I should be able to just clip it right in. Now this particular piece is not OEM, but here's the part number. The actual OEM piece is something like $40. I found this one on eBay for $6, free shipping local in Virginia. So I know I get it fast. After that, I couldn't justify paying $40 for this plastic piece. So let's see if we can get it on. Now I tried to fit this guy in through here, but I think I'm actually gonna have to at least remove this piece right here to be able to get to it. Looks like we got two T30s. All right, so I got the first two out. Actually looks like there's a third one right here. 
So this little bracket came out. Those are the three that were bolted in. This is what it looks like. They have this little piece that's kind of stuck in there like this. And looking at this, hopefully last piece I have to remove. It's pretty loose here. I think it's just one push pin. And then I think I can unclip it from the top right here. And it was in a pretty awkward position, but I got this little guy out from under here. Slide this piece this way. Looks like there's a peg holding it in right there. And this should come out. So we got this piece out too. It actually was one more push pin. We got a lot more room to work here in the moment of truth. Let's see if this will fit. Looks like it clipped into me. All right, so I got everything buttoned up. Just need to go ahead and put the fender liner back in. Even though this is just a little auxiliary radiator, I don't think we're gonna have any issues with that plastic piece blocking any major airflow. New passenger side, factory driver side. I'm glad to get that sewed up and have both my fog light trims match. Something small that most people might not notice, but me being the owner, I'm gonna be the most critical about the car and it started to bother me. Like I said, I don't think a little plastic piece is gonna cause any major temperature issues. I saw one guy on the forums basically pointing out that if you use this piece with a similar piece on the Sportline bumper, not the M Sport bumper, on the 440s, it actually comes with a warning saying not to use it. It restricts airflow, may lead to engine overheating. It did say that on realoem.com for that 440 piece, but I couldn't find that little warning accompanying the right piece on any of the F30s or the F34s. Plus the simple fact that BMW offers the piece and the radiator is so small, I don't think it's gonna make that much of a difference. However, I will keep an eye on my temperature for the next couple of days as I always do. Now, similarly to the rock guard that comes with the new recall radiator piece, I'm gonna now have some extra protection for this lower radiator. And just that easy is how you replace your lower auxiliary radiator on your F chassis one, two, three, or four series. If you like the video, go ahead and hit that like button down below. And if you haven't already, don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any F34 content. As always, I appreciate you hanging out in the garage with me for another one. Y'all stay safe, be blessed, and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.